Hello, today I'd like to show you how to do um, a different method of uh, machine applique, but not a fused applique this time. Um, so I've just done a little sample here, and the reason I've done two of them is that I've actually used two different forms of stitching to stitch the applique on, which are pretty hard to tell the difference unless you're really up close. But I thought I'd show you both because uh, some machines have different stitches and some have other different stitches. So I would think that hopefully we can cover most machines um, with these stitches. So what I've done to do the applique is I've uh, cut out a plastic template from template plastic. Now I found that uh, when I had cut my template out, when I lay it um, onto something to trace it, I actually can't see because that plastic doesn't really stand out. So what I've done to cope with that is with a permanent marking pen, I've actually just gone around that edge like that. So that highlights that edge, so that just helps me position if I'm trying to position it, or if, just for tracing so that I can see where that edge is. So that's just a permanent pen that won't do any harm to anything. They dry really quickly. Um, and so then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to actually trace it onto a piece of a very lightweight um, violin interfacing, not really sure what it's called all around the world, um, but it's it's not fusible, it's just something that you would perhaps use for pattern tracing or something, but it's a fairly soft one, you don't want a stiff one, and we're going to trace that shape uh, just with a pencil or something, it doesn't really matter too much what you trace it with. I'm going to trace that onto that uh, soft violin. Now this violin, if it's soft, can because we're going to probably leave it in behind the applique, it does need to be soft. And also because we, because you're dealing with different sorts of shapes. Now if you're tracing this on, you need to leave a space in between because we're going to be turning the edges of the applique under. So just make sure you're leaving about half an inch or so between each shape. So I'm just going to trace two on here. And the reason I'm tracing two on is because I'm actually going to use some five inch squares that I happen to have that happen to just be the right size to take two of these shapes. I often use my squares for applique as well as um, piecework. So there I've traced, hopefully you can see that, I've traced two shapes of that sort of a leaf type shape onto there and now I'm going to place that onto a square of fabric that I want to make those shapes out of. And onto the right side, I'm going to be stitching it as if it was kind of right sides together because we'll be turning it out the other way shortly. So now I'm going to go to the sewing machine. As long as you've got enough fabric, like a quarter of an inch either outside of your drawn line, that's great. So now I'm going to take that to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch on that line all the way around that shape. So just starting somewhere, not necessarily at a point, in fact probably not at a point, and just stitch on that line just with a regular sewing stitch, but following your drawn line. So when I get to that point at the end of that shape, just pop, if you've got a needle down, that's helpful to pivot with. So try and keep that a nice smooth shape if you can because that's going to be how your applique is going to come out, whatever you've stitched now. So if you stitch a wonky line, you'll probably have a wonky applique. And I've just overlapped the sewing. Rather than do a locking stitch, because I didn't want the extra bulk, I've just gone over two or three stitches. And trim your threads away. Now I would normally just go ahead and stitch the next one, but I don't need to do that today. I'm going to now cut that out. So now just cutting... Um, maybe about an eighth of an inch away, not as much as a quarter of an inch, probably an eighth of an inch is quite good, away from your stitching. All the way around. An eighth of an inch just allows things to, to turn and sit under without being too bulky and without you having to do too much um, snipping and messing around with other aspects, which you don't want when you're doing applique. There's enough other things going on. Okay, so I've trimmed that approximately an eighth of an inch away from my stitching which you probably can't see and I've actually got another one here I'm going to do two different ones so that we can see which ones are which I'd already stitched around this one beforehand so again just that eighth of an inch away from the stitching which is the drawn line that you've done okay 
there, so I'll fix those bits later. Now, I just want to put a slash in that piece of violin. Sometimes your scissors won't go in. Now, you don't want to cut your fabric, but your little unpicking tool is really quite good for this. So just slide it into the violin and just do a little slash up the middle there. So we'll do that on both of them. Being careful not to cut your fabric behind, just that um, the, the uh, non-woven violin that we've got there. Now the other thing I'm going to do, because I have got a point here, I'm just going to snip off the extra fabric at the point. Don't snip your stitching, but stitch away that so that you haven't got a bulk sitting in that point when we try and turn it out. Okay, so I've done that both ends. So now I just want to turn that out the right way basically. So we're going to pop that through. Just be careful you don't rip all your violin. It's, it is a fairly delicate product um, when we're doing this sort of thing and we wanted it to be soft but we don't want to rip it to shreds. Okay now with, with some sort of a tool that you use to help pop little points out I often use my scissors but if they're too sharp you'll just pop a hole through it so don't do that. So pop your little points out so they're sitting nicely and the other thing I do with this tool when I'm in there is I just run that around that seam line and that just helps get that nice smooth curve that we're after so just run it on the on the fabric side you want to run that around so that it just pops that seam out nicely and because we're on a bit of a curve it kind of acts a bit like being on the bias and it just comfortably pops out. Okay, so that's one. I'll just quickly pop the other one out because I'm going to do two, two different stitches to show you how we do this. Now this makes for a lovely soft applique, perhaps a little bit more like hand applique, but I don't really want to call it an imitation of hand applique. Um, it's just a different way of machine appliqueing. You can actually use this also for hand applique, this same method. If you've got quite a lot of shapes, hearts and leaves and all sorts of shapes, um, you can do it with flowers and all sorts of things if you want to do things like that. I actually have a friend who's made a lovely applique heart quilt and all her hearts were done like this. Now I'm going to take that to the iron and press those so that I get a nice edge on those. So I'm going to press it from the right side. So just keep an eye out at this stage that it is sitting nicely, that you haven't got the violin showing. You don't want any of that showing. And just give that a quick press so that it gives you a nice, you should have a nice smooth edge with only that one eighth of an inch turn in on that. I'll just do the other one while we're here. Now at this stage, if you felt that you didn't want that violin to stay in there, you could just cut some of that away. I tend to leave it there, it doesn't worry me, um, but you certainly can cut some of that away if you'd like to. I'll just cut this one away a little bit. Um, you could cut it away a little bit more. You don't want to cut it right to the edge though. So what I'm now going to do is position that onto the background fabric. Now I'm just going to do something like that. I'm just putting it on point, I guess on the diagonal there um, and you could pop a pin in that if you felt you wanted to hold it in place or a dab of um, a temporary glue or something would hold it in place but I find I don't usually need anything very much and now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to applique that so I'm going to select on my machine um, a, a blind hemming stitch and I'm going to take the stitched length sorry, the stitch width right down and on this machine it only goes down to number two, so whatever really low is, and my stitch length to only one, which is a tiny little stitch. So a, a, a blind hemming stitch, I probably should have drawn this for you, I don't know if I've got something here that'll show up, comes along with a few stitches and then it does a little V. That's not going to work. Where's my pen? There we go. This is what a blind hem looks like. It goes along a few little stitches and then it comes in and does a little V. 
and along. So that's the kind of stitch that we're looking for. And I'm going to do that around on here now. And I've got an applique foot on. Make sure that you've got the right foot on your sewing machine that will allow your needle to swing across. And I'm just going to start somewhere along one of these sides and just start sewing. So now what, what we should have is the stitch going onto the background fabric but right next to where the applique is so that you're not actually going to see that stitch. You don't want to see it. It's got to be hidden right up next to the applique. If you're not sure where to position it, you can just manually turn your flywheel till that needle is sitting right next to your applique but on, onto the background. And so then I'm going to just see so just tiny little stitches and one across. One across, straight stitches, one across. Now if you have a needle down position, it's very helpful when you do applique. You, as soon as you get to a bit of a bend, stop and lift your foot up and turn. Don't try and wrench it around. It's not helpful to you in the long run because things will go a little bit skew if. I'm actually going to take my pin out because it's in my way. Okay, so you can see I'm just doing that little straight stitch and every so often it's got a little kick in its gallop and away it goes onto the fabric, which just catches that applique fabric. And I'm using, should have talked to you about the thread, I'm using a very lightweight thread. Can you see the thread that I've got here? It's, it's, it's actually a synthetic, um, but the main thing is that it's a lightweight thread. It could be a silk or a very fine cotton, um, something that, that doesn't show too much. And it could be an invisible thread, one of the invisible nylons. Now when I'm up this end of my shape, away from where I started, I usually like to just pull my top thread through because I haven't started with a lock stitch or anything. So I'm just going to pull that through. So I just pulled till I had a loop and managed to pull that thread through to the back from the top. And I'm going to tie those two threads in a knot and then I'm going to trim them off. Just that just helps secure it all. So to have a very long thread here. This is a little bit tedious, but I'm not very good at coming back and and uh, trimming off threads and pulling them through later on. So I think I, I like to do it as I go. Okay, back to the applique. So we're just continuing on here with this little applique stitch or the blind hemming stitch. Okay, now I'm nearly back at the beginning. When I get to the beginning, you don't want to overlap too much. Hopefully it'll just about meet up with your little stitch there. And then you can just take that out, snip the threads, and again, grab your back thread and pull. And you'll find that that front thread will just create a loop. And you can just pull that through to the back. And again, I tie those in a knot and just trim them. When I trim them away, I don't cut them up really close. I probably leave about um, half an inch or three-eighths of an inch of a tail of thread so that it doesn't immediately unravel. And there I've got a nicely applique shape. If you look really closely, you can actually see the thread around there. But as a general thing, you don't really see it at all, and it just looks like it's been beautifully appliqued. Now I'm going to do the other one, but I'm going to use this time um, a different stitch. I'm going to use a, a blanket stitch, like we normally do around, or often do around fused appliqué. So I'm going to put this on the same way, and I'm going to change the stitch on my machine to hopefully a blanket stitch. And again, I'm going to reduce. I want to reduce the width of that down to like 1.5 on my machine the normal would have been 2.5 and I'm going to reduce and I'm going to increase the length on this one 
to about 3, where the normal was about 2.5. That just means that my straight stitch, so when we do a blanket stitch, and on this same little template here, I'll draw this little blanket stitch. So that, that was the blind hem that had a V in it. The blanket stitch most often is a straight stitch that goes in and it comes back out again in the same place. And then it does another straight one. So it goes in, back out. So that's what I'm going to do this time. But my little in bit, I've shortened. I only wanted it to be just a little tiny in. Um, so these little bits that catch will be closer together than they were on the other stitch. Oh, I could go a touch bigger, maybe to 3.5. And same thing, you want that straight stitch to be on the background fabric, not on the applique, with just the one that comes across onto the applique so that you're not seeing it. So I'm going to do very similar to what I've just done but it's just one stitch in between each one that catches onto the background fabric. So again, a lightweight thread that won't show on your background. And again, if you've got the needle down position, that's really helpful. Same thing, just lift your foot a little bit and move it round when you're on a curve. Don't try and wrench it, it's not helpful. When you get to the point if you're not quite there, you can just shorten that stitch a little bit manually so that it goes down in the point, turn it and let it do its little in on the point and then turn it round again. Just take it slowly, it won't be too hard for you. And the same thing, I'm going to, now that I'm away from where I started, I'm going to pull that top thread through and tie a knot. If you can't get hold of the loop, sometimes a little pin will grab it for you. But most often it's fairly easy to get hold of. And just trim that away. As I said, 3 eighths of an inch, half an inch away from the knot and then continue on with my applique. So you can see that this is quite a good way to do some applique. And as I said, you can use this same method of turning fabric in with that soft violin on the back for hand applique. It's, uh, it's just a great way to do things that, and it's probably a little bit softer than using a fusible product. Okay, so I'm back to the beginning now. Take that out. Give myself a bit of length on the threads and I'm just going to pull that front thread through and tie a knot there so that it doesn't all unravel in a hurry. And I just think that that's a, another great way to do some applique. Now, I'll pop them here so that hopefully the camera can come in on these. There's, there's very little difference from a distance or actually even up close. On, uh, on what you can see. You can you just can't see. If you've sewn that nice and close to your applique shape, you just can't see that stitch unless you really sort of tug and pull at it. But who's going to do that? Um, so hopefully that helps you with yet another idea to do some applique. Um, I think that there's just so many possibilities out there that uh, if we can just have a little go at some different things, it's really just a helpful fun way of doing things so remember we needed to have a template to, to, to well to draw around or you could be tracing your shape of course some soft and um, pliable violin that's not an iron-on product and we traced it 
we, we laid it down on the right side of our fabric, we stitched around on the actual line, we cut it out approximately an eighth of an inch away, we snipped off if there's any corners. If you've actually got a down shape coming in somewhere, you would just need to snip into the corner. Um, and then we put a slash in the violin only, not in the fabric. We turned it out the right way, we pressed it, popped it on our fabric, and we've done this stitching. And I've either used the blanket stitch or I've used a little blind hammer. Your machine most likely does one or the other of those. If not, um, maybe there's something else you can do, or you can also, of course, use it for hand applique. So hopefully that will help somebody. Thank you.